This week in Video Game History. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to This Week in Video Game History, a show that takes a bite-sized look into the events related to video games and their storied past. This week, let's take a look at the release of a console that helped usher in a new era for game developers and gamers alike. Straying away from the currently popular pixelated platformers, sprites, and cartridges in favor of 3D worlds, polygonal personalities, and compact discs. The Sony PlayStation was a hugely successful, significant, and exceptional home console that brought the higher-end graphics of computers and arcades to your couch and TV. On December 3, 1994, the Sony PlayStation, also known as the PS1 or PSX, was released in Japan, just a week after the Sega Saturn, as both gaming consoles were fighting for a new era of 32-bit CD-ROM gaming. And even though Sega came out the door with the very popular arcade ports of Virtua Fighter and Daytona USA, it initially was doing well. However, it didn't take long for the cracks to show in its lesser capability to develop 3D games, no third-party titles at its launch, which was compounded without a new primary Sonic game. Sega's mascot, I might add. Whereas the PlayStation was hot on its heels, and once it hit the North American and European markets in September 1995, almost a year later. It would be $100 cheaper than the Saturn, was a lot more developer friendly in the 3D department, aka the future, sporting comparable and arguably better titles in Ridge Racer and Tekken, and a marketing campaign aimed at teenagers. It would eventually blow Sega out of the water with a 60% video game market share by 1999, and is still one of the best-selling video game consoles of all time, which would continue into the 2000s with the release of the PlayStation 2, the best-selling video game console of all time. But that's for a different video. For now, let's take a gander at how Sony pulled it off, where they started, and how it affected my gaming lifestyle afterwards. So up until this point, there had been a multitude of attempts at a CD-ROM style gaming console which predate the Sony PlayStation. The CDI, Panasonic's 3DO, and the Sega Saturn to name a few. Unfortunately, the focus of games were not much better than what the SNES and Sega Genesis had to offer. And a lot of the endeavors to create a more realistic style of game came across as a bit odd, clunky, or more like a movie rather than a game. Even Nintendo was beginning to see the writings on the wall as they were working with Sony, who was primarily an electronics company at the time, to produce the sound chips for the Super Famicom, as well as a peripheral CD attachment that would try to extend the life of the console. This came about because of one Ken Kutaragi, the father of the Sony PlayStation, who was an executive with Sony that saw a future in the gaming space and wanted Sony to have a foothold of their own. It should have been a match made in heaven, but instead, due to issues with their contract, Nintendo infamously went behind their backs and announced at a consumer electronics show that they would instead be working with Philips, Sony's direct competitor, in what's now considered the greatest betrayal of all time in the gaming industry. But once again, that's a story for another video. Suffice it to say that the then president of Sony, Norio Oga, was furious and decided to seek revenge by creating Sony Computer Entertainment, a new division of Sony headed by Ken Kutaragi, which would take Sony into the video game console business. Now, given that Sony had no experience in game development, they had to rely on support from third-party developers, with the likes of Namco, Konami, and Psygnosis, that would eventually be in their favor rather than relying on in-house development and mascots to sell their products. 
which would provide a diverse library of games that appealed to almost any type of player and coincided with their initial marketing campaign. Rather than advertising the PlayStation as a toy to children, they insisted on a slightly older demographic in teenagers that would invariably affect younger generations who looked up to their older and cooler friends or siblings. Nintendo would come out a bit later with the Nintendo 64, but by then PlayStation had already made its impact and although Sony wasn't necessarily the first in what they brought to the table, they did bring the best version of it. At the right place, the right time, the right price point, and to the right audience that was most likely beginning to tire of the bit wars between Sega and Nintendo. So I believe my family was a bit late in picking up a PlayStation because I think we already had a Nintendo 64 at the time, but that may have been for the better. I can remember clambering my way through Shadows of the Empire and failing miserably only to fork over the controller and my brother deciding to plug in the PlayStation instead, and showcased a demo for the upcoming Final Fantasy VII release. And it was like nothing I had experienced so far. It took something that I had already loved and brought an entirely fresh feel to it without straying too far from its familiarity. Now, like I said just a minute ago, the fact that we waited to pick up a PlayStation was in our favor because by this time, games like Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, Crash Bandicoot, and Twisted Metal had been released. And for us, started to take the front seat while the Nintendo 64 was pretty much relegated to Mario Kart and GoldenEye parties. Looking further into the catalog, we eventually saw the releases of Metal Gear Solid a beautifully told story that was matched by its inventive gameplay and artful use of music and cinema. And later, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. A game that could have been a massive flop, but instead completely changed how a sports game can play and feel with its accessibility and repetitive fun allowing the space for a broader audience to enjoy. Now, I can admit that I was a teenager during this period, which is exactly who they were marketing to, and it worked. But that doesn't change how good these games were at the time, even if they haven't aged too well for the modern era. Regardless, the Sony PlayStation is one for the ages, and one I'm happy to have been around to experience in its prime. So, happy anniversary, and cheers to another one. That's it for this week in video game history. Thanks for watching. As always, I'm Benjamin Humphreys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Good night. Come on!
now Why don't you follow my words Because we're almost done I'll make it easier first I wanna see if you wanna see What it means to be the man With a master plan Are you the man now? Here we go now Kick, punch, block Kick, punch, block Chop, kick, block Chop, kick, block Block, tell them kick it Block, tell them kick Block, duck, punch Block, duck, punch Duck, duck, turn Duck, duck, turn Jump, kick, chop Jump, kick, chop And punch, punch, punch Punch, punch, punch It's for today. Good job, Parappa. You can go on to the next stage now. Yeah!